a very good morning to all of you welcome back to ansarkari so moving ahead with the discussions and critical discussions i should say regarding the important topics from 16th of october so as we celebrate 16th october as the world food day so there are important articles based on it so even yesterday we were discussing on the same thing on same lines so it states food sufficient india needs to be hunger free too so this is directly related to food security and hunger and also that is a key aspect related to reduction of poverty alleviation at the same time now when we talk about multi dimensional poverty or when we talk about the hidden hunger so that should be the target instead of just stating hunger free so we should be hidden hunger free so what are the challenges here first is lack of purchasing power capacity so this is again one of the indirect ways through which we can ensure that if suppose the real income at in the rural areas or when talking about the structural reforms in the agriculture sector as we state that one of the targets is doubling the farmers income so that would directly help the government also in rationalizing the revenue expenditure in terms of the food subsidy that government is providing under the national food security act where we see that already we have reached the 80 crore beneficiary level under the national food security act where subsidized food grains staple food grains are provided at subsidized prices to the the people to the poor people also so that is one of the ways so for example here we have the data like it is talking at the global level the global hunger assessment based on prevalence of undernourishment so this is showing continuing lack of progress towards the goal of zero hunger so this is one of the sdg goals also global magnitude of undernourished it has increased from 9.4% or 757 million uh, it has risen to 9.4% and it is disproportionate in african region at the same time with 20% of the people facing un again undernourishment or in say hunger so in real counts when you talking about asia it is home to the largest magnitude of those who are hungry so here we can say that role of india rather becomes very very important also because when we talking about even the vision or the target of being uh the food basket for the world so firstly it would be catering to again these needs in the asian region and then we can look at even the exporting opportunities beyond so this area can be again one of the the basis of again strengthening our relationship with africa also so there is manifestation of hunger because of hidden hunger or intrinsic hunger we can say so cost and affordability of a healthy diet is again a challenge so one is from the perspective of again there is lack of purchasing power capacity so there we can talk about poverty alleviation measures and secondly from the perspective of supply side measures because of supply side instability in the the food grains availability or the fruits and vegetables availability we see that the cost increases so that is cost induced inflation that goes up so affordability becomes a concern and recently also we have been talking about the challenge of uh, food security again so because of again food security it is more volatile it is considered to be again more risky because it is directly impacting the purchasing power of the consumer so at the same time we talk about india's per capita income right so right now like it is at 2400 dollars per person so we should again be focusing upon how we can reduce the wealth inequality at the same time now coming to unhealthy diets in india that is also one of the major concerns because we are becoming so much reliant or we are becoming over reliant on the processed food items so although we are again not hunger free but when it comes to the nutritional security that still remains a concern so here for example eat lancet report is there 
so they did a survey so it recommended or when we look into the recommendations by even the indian council of medical research so they stated that diets in india are generally unhealthy generally they remain unhealthy there is imbalance in the composition also in relation to to these reports and the recommendations so here we can talk about first the availability of diverse food options so cultivation of millets would make the the availability of other healthier options in the market when it comes to consumers availability another aspect would be at the individual level how are we making healthy choices like we have fit india campaign or when we're talking about eat right campaign so that can play an important role in terms of consumer awareness and then thirdly regulating the food processing industries when it comes to the availability of the high sugar high salt and high fat content food options available particularly in the fmcg sector so when you're talking about the global hunger index again this is one of the important indicators so so it places india poorly in relation to other nations because when we're talking about the components, they are more about nutrition and early age mortality. So it is not, again, so diverse when it comes to the indicators that it is assessing to come to the score under the Global Hunger Index. Although we see recently, like uh, even the Niti Aayog's Multidimensional Poverty Index report stated that 25 crore people, they have come out of poverty in India in last nine years. So we are moving towards, again, poverty elevation in a multidimensional manner. So this year, the theme of the World Food Day is right to foods for a better life and a better future. So again, we can connect it to the fundamental right to food under Article 21. So how to achieve universal right to food? And even because of the impacts of climate change also, we see that the productivity and the yield would be directly impacted. So that is also going to impact the supply of the food. And then discouraging the food waste is another very crucial element in order to again ensure the adequate food availability till the last mile. Organizing proper food collection. So warehousing facilities, role of food cooperation of India becomes crucial and even the distribution. So integration of the supply chain or making the supply chain more resilient. So redistribution of the food grains in humanitarian manner is needed. Even when we are seeing regional conflicts or the war, regional wars going on. So when it comes to refugee crisis, so making available the basic Again, when it comes to the humanitarian aid. So food becomes very crucial, apart from, again, the healthcare services. So here we are talking about equitability of agri-food systems. Food access. So particularly, this is related to accessibility of the food. As we are talking about, again, the last point that I raised was impact of climate change. So here we see, for example... The Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations and the International Fund for Agricultural Development. When it comes to, again, investments, for example, promoting more precision agriculture, or we have, thirdly, the World Food Program. So this trinity becomes very important when it comes to ensuring equitable access to the food. So access to food definitely supports peaceful, prosperous communities. Focus should be on nutrition. Talking about this ICDS scheme there is in India when it comes to children's development. And thirdly, economic productivity. So even this is, again, avail availability of nutritious food specifically would be connected with the quality of demographic dividend at the same time. Directly helping in reducing, again, the child mortality. Now, when we talk about different revolutions, like the white revolution, blue transformation, talking about the fishery sector, and definitely the green revolution, so that has definitely transformed the India's agri-food system. It has ensured that we are a food surplus country. We're able to maintain a buffer stock. We're able to export it at the same time. We are able to ensure that it is available at the subsidized, subsidized prices to the beneficiary. Now, when it comes to, again, agriculture uh, or the for di like different revolutions, like Green Revolution 2.0 in the current context, 
So their fortified food is important, biofortified food is important, inclusion of technology, how that can be that can ensure again equitable benefit sharing to the people, be it again GM uh, seed varieties or high yield varieties can help us. So more precision agriculture would be the we can say the outcome or the objective under the Green Revolution 2.0. So it is talking about here India's journey to national foods uh, towards the food security. So when we're talking about again at the time of independence, again, we were not food surplus country. So there was hunger. There were again, we were seeing like there were directly impacts on people's quality of life we can talk about. The National Food Security Act, we talked in previous article itself, uh, 2013. 80 crore beneficiaries, fortified rice is being distributed through this. So addressing the inequality is important. Ensuring that everyone has access to nutritious food is essential steps. Challenges in agriculture is from the perspective of, again, climate change is one thing. Then agriculture, like land fragmentation is another thing because that prevents us from, again, reaching the scale, the larger scale of or increasing scale of benefits when it comes to improving overall productivity and yield the natural resource degradation is the challenge when you're talking about groundwater strains and increased again risk related to pest attacks smaller farm holdings so marginal farmers constitute somewhere around 80 percent of the farmers in india Improving market access is very crucial. Here we've talked about how even like warehousing facilities is very important. Role of private sector is important. MSMEs is important. Self-help groups connecting them with again the digital or digitized platforms is important. Gem portal becomes important. Infrastructurally, we talk about the coal storages or the scheme related to PM Kisan or even when it comes to Kisan Rail. So that is also Kisan Rail is focusing upon diversified options to access to even the, the distant markets. So poverty, we have discussed in detail in the previous article. Climate change, we have talked how direct impact on even the, the, the productivity and the yield. So hair crop insurance becomes important. For example, we have the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yoshna. The right to food is important as a part of fundamental right under Article 21 of the Constitution. PDS, targeted PDS, it's contributing collective responsibility when you're talking about the global level. So this trinity is very important as we started this article with. This can be said that what we article in the article with regarding to food, agri-food system, we have all come together. Hmm. Poverty, climate change, infrastructure, warehousing आ जाएगा इसमें. इसमें नहीं दिया warehousing बारे में. हाँ ये बोल दिया. यहाँ पे हम discuss कर चुके हैं. ये मतलब first three articles are related to this only. World Food Day. तो जैसे yield cannot be the sole indicator for agriculture. Again yield जो है that is the supply side measure. But जैसे हमने पहले article में बात करी कि Demand side measures mein kya hai? that is focusing upon increasing the purchasing power of the people. How we can ensure the farmer's income it doubles and then it remains stable at that level. And sustainability is growing further. Also, food inflation is another challenge. So if we are increasing the yield, how we, we are ensuring that it is happening in an equitable manner. The role of ICR is important, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, like AI-powered Sagu Bamu pilot project in Telangana. Focus on improving water use efficiency, enhancing farm biodiversity. So this is focusing, yield is related to, again, supply-side measures itself. Better indicators, like few principles can help us share better indicators for India's agriculture system. First is our food system impacts the health. Of the nation, yes, this is definitely it is true. It impacts not just the again and look into the micro aspect, it is related to the health of our demography or the human resource, or the labor productivity. Then second indicator should directly address the outcomes. So again, here we can talk about the data integrity and even the 
unbiased data or then data safety at the same time is a crucial element that needs to be balanced together. Third is metrics related to the soil. So biological activity, water use efficiency, farm biodiversity, or when we talk about crop diver uh, crop diversity, intercropping methodology, or agro uh, agro farming is important, agroforestry, or when we're talking about even like technology, how that is helping us in terms of assessing the the quality of the soil, the nutri nutrients, like which fertilizer is going to be more appropriate. So there the role of, again, artificial intelligence is important. And then landscape diversity score and the degree of income diversification. So yeah, precise. we can talk about these phrases. Single indicator definitely is not going to do justice to multiple outcomes because of its larger scale. Previous article, we have talked about green revolution, white revolution, even again from the perspective of yield itself. And now I'm talking about the fortified food. So like there's a recent study by ICR found that to chase for the high yielding varieties of rice and wheat, it has reduced the micronutrient densities. So here we can talk about the biofortified foods or the GM seeds, how that can ensure both the things, nutritional security and even from the perspective of better yield. So even latest National Family Health Survey report states a third of Indian children under five are stunted, two thirds are anemic. So it would be again, not just catering to nutritional security itself, but helping us even in reducing the burden of non-communicable diseases at the same time. Convention wisdom is that maximizing yields maximizes farmers' net income. Again, this is related to the first aspect. So it's time to champion a new paradigm where agriculture success is measured by its ability to nourish the people, sustain livelihoods, and protect our planet for future generations. Now, we discussed this in a detailed manner yesterday. The Nobel Prize in Economics this year goes to the importance of social institutions, strong and strengthened social institutions in order to ensure inclusive growth, sustainable and stable growth. So this is, again, in that context, why nations fail. Like in the context of India, it was talking about be it our successful function of our independent judiciary, because again, on the basis of how we have maintained constitutional supremacy and each pillar or each organ becomes very, very crucial in its, again, own essence. So that is one indicator. And not just now when we're talking about these institutions, be it judiciary, executive or legislature, but when we're talking about even the NGOs, they are also very important when it comes to, again, directly bridging the gap between the, the government and the citizens. So more inclusive institutions are needed. Quality of institutions. So like we have Center for Eminence in India. So that is one aspect, which is again in this direction of quality of institutions. So richest 20% of the countries in the world today, they are 30 times richer in terms of average income than the poorest 20. So it is again, one of the factors is the role played by social institutions. On the need to make more containers to boost the trade. So here the role of Concord is important as an institutional stakeholder container corporation of india so containers are important in terms of generating again the domestic capacity so that we can export or we can trade more that would be directly helping us in uh, reducing even the turnaround time that we talk about so does india have a storage of containers for the swift transport of goods so from the perspective of trade security also, or when we're talking about India playing the role of, again, the transshipment zone. So like recently in Vizag, we have our first transshipment port being constructed or overall, when we're talking about 
the Sagar policy or when it comes to the port-led development, the blue revolution that we talk about, promotion of blue economy. So it is all related to somewhere trade. So how important are containers? Again, for the seamless transport, it would help revolutionize the world trade by rapidly cutting the transportation time. Again, transportation time would get reduced. So again, we can say overall, transportation cost can become uh, more competitive. So there are, again, there are proper standards and dimensions and cargo carrying capacity. So what standards would be best suitable or here do we need again our own indigenous standard is can be one of the questions. What is current scenario in India regarding again making containers? So we have again increased our target of increasing our handling capacity in various ports to boost the, the exports. Ambitious new ventures like these are examples. Vadavan port, uh, this is again near Bombay. Then Galathia Bay, it is in Andaman and Nicobar. As well as multimodal India, Middle East, Europe economic corridor. So they are built around containers. So India's container market is expected to more than double by 2028. We have around 10,000 to 30,000 container boxes a year which are manufactured and this production can support only a fraction of the project projected doubling, only a fraction. So China is the major again leader in this also. It is making 2.5 to 3 million container boxes per year. And even cost competitiveness maybe. China may it is somewhere between $2,500 to $3,500. India may it is starting from $3,500. So it is at definitely upper end pay. Yeah. So here we can promote more of we can say joint ventures if that's possible in terms of even reducing or bringing in the expertise with the joint ventures. What can the government do? So government has come up with Make in India initiative regarding this again to promote more indigenous manufacturing and production. So again, Concord, important, eh? Container Corporation of India, private players, they are being again included and in, by directly incentivizing the private production. So PLI scheme, whether again, you mentioned BI, but it is, they, they need to be implemented, not yet implemented for this aspect as of now. So container yards, container yards capacity at Indian ports itself, so that there is availability. Yeah, so maybe there is no delay. Storing empty con containers, ke liye bhi we need again spaces. So PM uh, Gati Shakti program, ke hum baat kar sakte hai, ya phir again, utilizing wastelands, how that can be one of the ways of again creating domestic capacity for the storage. So raw materials would be required. So kya wo hume import karne padenge? Input cost uske wajah se increase ho sakti hai. We'll be import dependent. Indian made containers mandating that would be enhancing domestic demand. Developing then tracking their development and monitoring it would be important. Through a unified logistics interface platform and logistics data bank by the government. So leads index ke jab hum baat karte hai jo logistics sector pe particularly to digitization having a single platform can help in better monitoring and ensuring that we are on track so our ports are at strategic location on the east west trade route but cannot aspire to be hub ports because of the again container shortage is the reason so as a result, we see Colombo, Dubai, Hong Kong, they draw mothership traffic and not the Indian ports. So this is why we talked about transshipment ports bhi at the same time important. Hai. Containers can seamlessly be transported via rail, ship and road. So Bharat Mahala project, hai, we are having different projects related to industrial corridors. So everything would be contributing towards this direction also. So importance of exit polls in again strengthening democracy is important. So it becomes very important that exit polls are also carried in a fair manner. So recently, Haryana elections ke context mein we saw that uh, they were off the mark compared to what were the results. So it is talking about do we need some reforms in the met methodology in order to ensure or increase the accuracy of these exit polls. 
and just talking about when are the exit polls conducted and what is the current methodology. So current CSDS, we see that Lok Niti post poll predicted NDA would receive a voucher of 46% while that of India block, it would be 35%. So error margins were kept 3%. Error margins is related to key what can be the standard deviation in the results uh, as far as which are being projected by the exit polls. The results showed key NDA, it bagged 43% vote share and India block, uh, it bagged 37 So it is not projected the seats for the alliance, but again, the coalition ke baare mein hai. So exit polls, opinion polls hote are sample surveys where we are again assessing on the basis of the choices of the consumers. Cross section the electorate, it is randomly chosen. Unko interview kiya jata hai about ki what is the choice of party or candidates. Us basis pe ek tarike se forecast kiya jata hai ki it can be what can be different possibilities as far as the results is concerned. So it can be conducted in either in person or devices or uh, digitally. Post poll surveys bhi hum inko bolte hain. So kya sample size ko increase karne ki zarurat hai? Ek wo question utta hai. Are we doing it again? Uh, kitna usko hum digitally kar rahe so that the data remains unbiased? And even sample size increase karna isle bhi important hai because we don't know ki voters ne jo vote cast ki actually they are talking in the same direction ya wahan pe bhi kuch influence ho sakti hai. So sample size is 19,600 across 23 states. So of Access My India was close to 8 lakhs. So here, yeah, do respondents, they're actually revealing their choice or not take a question. Bhi Coastal flooding harms different tree species differently. So because every tree species, again, they are different from each other, so impact be different over on their life. Again, the role that they are playing, again, as natural barriers. So coastal flooding, we are seeing because of, it can be because of increased sea level. We are seeing, again, uh, the pH content is declining, which is, it is becoming, the soil is becoming more acidic more salty when because of again increased frequency of the tropical cyclones that is also leading to coastal flooding and even when we're talking about the urban flood specifically in the coastal region so that would also lead to flooding that can be because of again increased deforestation at the same time so as climate is changing, sea level is rising, some sites and species may confer benefits to the growth whereas other may uh, experience conditions that is reducing the growth. So, iske se, we can say ki positive impacts bhi ho sakte hain. Because again, every tree species are having, they are behaving differently. So, picture may we are seeing Sundarbans as the biggest natural mangrove forest in the world, uh, straddling Bangladesh and India. So, we talk about sustainable development, symbiotic development when it comes to, for example, when we're studying the Sundarbans. So, like shrimp cultivation is one of the ways where we see local communities focusing upon, again, fisheries and shrimp cultivations or shrimp, uh, cult like when it comes to, again, generating jobs in the allied sectors. So trees respond quickly. How well trees grow in place depends on the places, ke temperature, ke upar, rainfall, soil health, access to water. All these factors play important role how trees would be impacting. What is their salinity tolerance is uh, again one of the factors. So Sundarban trees, they are highly tolerant to the salinity. So it is directly impacting even the biodiversity of the region also. So it is talking about tracking gradient boosted linear regression. So tree rings, study they consist of water vessels. Xylem bolte hai, water vessels ko trees mein. When trees is exposed to a lot of rain along with appropriate levels of sunlight and ambient temperature, it also develops more water vessels. 
सो इवन एसिड रेन की भी हम बात कर सकते हैं इट कैन ऑल्सो इम्पैक्ट द ट्रीज इन नेगेटिव मैनर सो ये ग्रेडियंट बूस्टेड लीनियर रिग्रेशन मॉडल जो है दिस इज अगेन स्टैटिस्टिकल मॉडल विच इज बेस्ड ऑन मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल यूज टू अंडरस्टैंड पैटर्न इन द ट्री रिंग्स सो ट्री रिंग्स की जो है वो हमें एक तरीके से हेल्प भी करते हैं रिगार्डिंग द स्टडिंग द लाइफ ऑफ द ट्री ऑल्सो एंड सेकेंडली जैसे हम यहाँ बात करें स्टडिंग द इम्पैक्ट ऑन द ट्रीज सी लेवल राइज इज एक्सेलरेटिंग सो इट इज इंक्रीजिंग बाई अराउंड टू मिलीमीटर इन नाइनटीन नाइन थ्री so 1993 mein this was the rate and now we obviously it would have increased further so the rate has since doubled double ho gaya climate researchers expect floods in the coastal areas will increase three fold by 2050 and the average number of days of flooding will also increase two fold site specific mechanisms are needed so coastal plant conservation strategies coastal authorities is important coastal regulation zones become important and sustainable agricultural practices would be important in the coastal regions so marshlands wetlands their conservation is important ramsa sites kim baat kar sakte hai site specificity of the reserves underscores importance of local conditions so role of local community would be very important tidal flooding bhi hota hai सो रेनुएबल एनर्जी कैसे हम जनरेट कर सकते हैं ड्यूरिंग टाइडल फ्लडिंग सो हाउ वी कैन कन्वर्ट दैट फ्रॉम चैलेंज टू एन अपॉर्चुनिटी सो कैनेडा लेजेस एक्सट्रॉशन वॉयेंट एक्ट एंड होमिसाइड बाई न्यू डेली बट अगेन दीज आर मेर एलिगेशन वी डोंट हैव द प्रूफ एंड इंडिया स्टैंड बीन अगेन वेरी क्लियर दैट uh like there is no proof these are mere allegations so india canada relations ki jab hum baat karte hain it is also related to again somewhere it is related to india us relations at the same time how it would be impacting that and in this context like india government has made fundamental error by thinking it could engage in murders or extortion or other violent acts against the canadians and the canadians so also it is also related to the political dynamics of canada at the same time because the sikh community is playing important role when it comes to even the the elections so canada to continue to ask for india's cooperation so india is already cooperating so khalistan issue is we can say the basis so far asean summit ki chahe hum baat kare that is also incredibly important meeting between the countries national security advisers was there so canada fully respects our sovereignty and territorial integrity of india expect the indian government to do the same for canada so what has been the impact on uh, the business links when you talk about india canada relations and e again the recent events so ft negotiations ke upar direct impact hame dekhne ko mil raha in terms of bilateral trade also we can talk about like for example here major items of india's exports to canada is gems jewelry precious stones pharmaceutical products ready made garments so जब हम बात करते हैं टेक्सटाइल सेक्टर ग्रोथ की भी तो इट वुड बी इम्पैक्टेड एंड आल्सो इंडिया मेजॉरिटी जो लार्जेस्ट हमारे टेक्सटाइल एक्सपोर्ट्स है वो यूएसए में भी जाते हैं तो उसके जो स्पिल ओवर इफेक्ट्स हमें देखने को मिलेंगे हाउ इंडिया वुड बी डीलिंग विद दैट इज अगेन अ चैलेंज इन फ्रंट ऑफ एस एंड इंडिया इज इम्पोर्ट फ्रॉम कैनेडा इंक्लूड पल्स सो फूड सिक्योरिटी और जो फूड इन्फ्लेशन है उससे रिलेटेड है वुड पल्स एज बेस्टोज पोटैश तो फर्टिलाइजर सप्लाई वुड ऑल्सो बी इम्पैक्टेड copper minerals industrial chemicals remittances another area india is the largest recipient of remittances from abroad this is no so sizable hamari population ka presence in indian diaspora is present in canada so india received estimated 125 billion dollars in remittances so remittances they form a part of uh, again the capital account under the balance of payment then canada's investments in india when we're talking about like recently we have seen tim hortons uh, they are they are being opened up mckean foods might have the biggest brand recall when it comes to canadian business in india
So it is going beyond coffee chains, frozen snacks. Pension funds, we are seeing they are growing asset management companies, financial services. So we have the National Investment Promotion Facilitation Agency or Invest India. So Canada is the 18th largest foreign investor in India. So FDI, Canada investments, they account for 0.5% of FDI inflows into India. Sort of road from the brink. Again, this is based on the same theme, Canada-India relations after Canada's recent allegations against India. So allegations. Recusing bilateral ties will be a long and difficult process. So it has to be, again, a bilateral thing. If India is stating that, again, there is no proof and Canada is also not having any proof. These are just allegations. So it has to be, again, equally coming from Canada also ki how to resolve the issue rather than, again, stretching it over without any proof. So National Security Advisor met his Canadian counterpart in Singapore to discuss the latest ramifications of the Niger matter as well as Canadian allegations India's diplomats cooper. So answers to India's problems on the Radcliffe line might well depend on the kind of lessons Pakistan draws from the turbulence on its western front frontier. So recently we talking about again our Minister of External Affairs visiting for visiting Pakistan for the SCO meeting. So it was very clearly stated that it is going to stay multilateral in nature and will not be going ahead with any kind of again uh, any bilateral talks with Pakistan. So he stated very clearly when it comes to SEO's uh, major role or, or major objective when it comes to containing down of extremism, terrorism is very important. So if that is given primacy, so we can see again more of stability, more of again regional integration as far as the SEO member countries is concerned. So Radcliffe Line is again the land border that we share between India and Pakistan. So Likha, there will be no bilateral talks. So deeply problematic structure of the relationship has not changed. Big breakthroughs in bilateral ties, they often looked so close, but they have again remained quite far and elusive. So, relationship has remained frozen for decades, meaning it is of little consequence either for the region or world beyond also. Because of occasional military crisis that we see. Negative nuclear stability is the key phrase. So, if you will, the India-Pakistan relations looks reassuring in comparison to the world historic developments in Pakistan's western borderlands. So, Again, Iranian revolution, which led to the establishment of Islamic Republic. Oshik, if you can better explain this one. Oshik, am I audible? The return of Taliban in Afghanistan, even that has intensified the turbulence in Pashtun lands, straddling, again, the Durand line, which is the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Tariqe Taliban, Pakistan being more active in Pakistan. So that is also raising the security concerns. So bone ossification test, how does it work? Or its applications kya hai in law? So recent there was again the murder of the Maharashtra former MLA Baba Siddiqui. It was closely related. We are talking about the bone ossification test. So ossification natural process hai of bone formation. 
starts from early development stage of fetus and continues until late adolescence, but differs slightly from individual to individual. Slight difference. So bone ossification test jo hai, x-rays of few bones that is done, such as those of hands or wrist ki bones, conducted to determine the skeletal and the biological development. It can assist in determining the age. So bone ossification test, se, we determine the age. So standard of maturation of bones, certain population. So how, why is age determination significant in criminal justice system? So person who is below 18 years is considered a minor. So firstly, is that aspect in criminal law differentiates between child and adult when it comes to even the procedure, what is going to be the correction and rehabilitation and the punishment. The entire procedure is different. Anyone below 18 is governed by the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act of 2015. So if there's again a person less than 18 years of age, so they cannot be sent to prison, which is meant for adults, and instead sent to an observation home. So child is brought before Juvenile Justice Board under this act again. So it comprises magistrate to social workers with experience in working with children. So maximum for three years, you can be again stayed in the special home. So there were amendments in this act, Juvenile Justice Can Protection Act in 2021 in cases where a child above the age of 16 years has been apprehended for a heinous crime. So minimum punishment is seven years of imprisonment. So, But for that, we need a preliminary assessment with regard to what is the mental state and the physical capacity to commit such a crime and offense. Ability to understand the consequences of that offense, that is also studied. Circumstances kya the which led to committing of that crime. So third, it is important, it is again a highly advanced US missile defense system which has been sent to Israel. So it prelims me pucha bhi gaya. It is also stationed in Japan also. So it has been sent to Israel along with the troops to operate. So in this picture, you can see third interceptor missile defense system. It's a it, battery consists of 95 sol, soldiers, six truck mounted launchers. So India may just truck mounted launchers. Agar hum baat kare, we have Pinaka air, air missile system. So it is developed by Lockheed Martin corporation so it can defend a larger area than the older patriot air and missile defense system so that is also from us it is multi-tiered air defense system israel already has the advanced one so third be Green washing guidelines, so again, green washing is related to it. You project or you portray that you are investing or you are taking sus some sustainable measures, but actually you are not. So that is green washing. So this pay government has recently formulated guidelines. Companies, they often make these dubious claims about their products and services being eco-friendly or the climate friendly. Six principles eh, for trustworthy environmental claims. So, picture you can see outside COP26, Glasgow 2021. So, we have guidelines for the prevention, regulation of greenwashing or misleading environment claims, which are issued by Central Consumer Protection Authority, working under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs. So, truthfulness and accuracy, clarity and unambiguity, fair and meaningful comparison. Hona chahiye. Make absolute and relevant claims. Imagery, it should not give wrong impression and no, no misleading endorsements should be promoted. So, these are six key principles important. Like generic terms, hoti hai, clean. So, clean ki definition is not standard definition. Nahi hai. Green, eco-friendly, good for planet. Now, here there is a different interpretation of carbon neutrality, natural, organic. So, these, all these appear to be somewhere similar. So, company would have to now substantiate these with the evidence. 
before claiming a product to be such. So specific environmental claims, just in baat karte ki it would be compostable, degradable hoga, free of free of something like free of ammonia, yeah, free of sulfates hoga. Sustainability claims honge, non toxic hoga, hundred percent natural claims bhi kiye jaate hain. So in this case, uh, evidence chahiye ga, internal verifications kiye jayenge, certificates chahiye from the statutory and independent third party verification. So making it more transparent, more, we can say more real. No person to whom these guidelines apply shall engage in the greenwashing. We'll continue in the next link.